Hey everybody, it's Preacher and welcome to our range comparison preview in our new office. How cool is this? If you've watched any of the other comparison videos, which are the melee and the tanks, we will be revisiting the tanks in a brief way, then you'll understand the way we look at things might not be the way that you think we should be looking at things. You might consider things like what's overpowered, how much damage is it doing, which one's a weak source, which one's underpowered. Those are things that Blizzard is currently fixing. So weighing up the damage isn't a really great measure of choosing your main. Likelihood is, if you choose a class that is very, very overpowered, chances are Blizzard's going to hammer that or bring it way back down. And if you look at a spec that you think is really fun but refuse to play it because currently it does little damage, Blizzard is likely to boost that back up. Their aim is to make sure everything is pretty close to each other, although there will be some exceptions. We look at these things based on fun, my personal idea of fun. That is always going to be subjective. Let's say Hunters, you're about to find out I weighed them very, very low, but a lot of people have contacted me saying I don't understand why people are hating on the Hunter. I find it very fun. Great, that's okay. I'm looking at this as if it was your main character. Can I recommend this class to you if you're going to play it for an entire expansion, okay? That's very different to if you're doing some very, very short content, logging in for a couple of hours a week, something like that. We're looking, can you play this for months on end? Every night. Can you log in and still probably have fun? Will it have ver versatility? Will it stay fresh? Will it scale very well? All those kind of things are what I put into this and why we spend hundreds of hours testing everything. And I've just spent the last two days doing huge amounts of testing while we've been rebuilding the new office to refresh myself on each of the range characters, okay? So similar with the melee, I'm gonna put the worst of the worst first so you can get those out of the way. In the middle will be classes that are absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with them whatsoever. They're just not spectacular. And then, of course, at the end of the video, we'll be looking at the classes that I personally think are absolutely fantastic, and Blizzard has done a hugely amazing job with them. All right, guys, so let's jump into it. Beginning then with the shitters. Let's kick off then with the Beastmaster Hunter. No matter what I did with the Beastmaster Hunter, from the day I logged it into the alpha to do the artifact quest and read what the tooltip said, I could not find any moment of joy whatsoever to be had with the BM Hunter. Which is quite sad, as it has the easiest, the widest opportunity to be really fun. It is the Hunter that is the Master of Beasts, and that could be taken into so many different ways. What they seem to have here, no matter how much I play it, is simply a spec that has the best basics of a spec this is like the absolute basics and they haven't had any of the fun stuff and the interesting stuff compounded on it not only that i would go as far as, as far as to say with a spec like this where you basically for the most part press whatever is not on cooldown and in some cases if you don't do that you're actually just losing dps that this spec is actually bad for you if you want to become a good wow player and i'm genuinely serious good plower good players who come down to play specs like the current version of bm will find themselves becoming excessively lazy and thinking about things in a very mundane, ordinary fashion, and then lose edges and skills about managing the nuances of World of Warcraft. If you're a bad player and you pick up BM because it looks very easy, and it is very easy, what you'll find is a very, very low or very slow sense of progression. You're not going to gain the skills necessary to be a really good player. That being said, specs like this exist for a reason. There are some people who flat out do not want to become good players and who want a very simple thing. The BM stands out for you. This actually harks back to me to the TBC era where hunters were quite literally binding their entire rotation to scroll mouse wheel. And you might think I'm exaggerating there. I am not. Plenty of hunters in the TBC, especially towards the end, simply bound things to scroll mouse wheel and would sit there for the entire raid scrolling their mouse wheel. And when I spoke to them, they flat out said, you know what, I actually don't mind this. This is fun enough for me. If that sounds like something for you, then BM is there. But for me... Good God, if I had to play this for more than a couple of hours at a time, even for my job, ugh, no thank you whatsoever. Moving down then, this is actually the last of the shitters, which is good news, actually. The range system overall was considerably better than the melee, in my opinion, is the Affliction Warlock. And you're probably going, what? Didn't you say Affliction was really fun? Yeah, it was. It was really fun. And the changes they've made, some of them in response to the community, but in Blizzard fashion, they went a little too far, unfortunately. So Affliction definitely had some issues. Of that, there is no doubt, particularly with picking out the idea of the Reaper of Souls. Now, Ulfalesh of itself is actually such a cool idea. It's dark, it's macabre, it fits the idea of the warlock, it fits the idea of the affliction, the disease riddling, pain causing, agonizing uh, spec it's supposed to be, and the idea that these souls are tragically trying to escape this prison that you're wielding along your back, and not only that, it's a badass looking scythe. 
Unfortunately, it did have its initial issues with the souls that escaped were quite difficult to target when things were getting a cluster and all this kind of stuff. So we said, can we maybe simplify this? Because the idea is very cool, but the way you've implemented it, not so much. Unfortunately, they responded to that and then went a little bit further. Now we have this one button reap souls. They got rid completely of the ghostly spirit animation, which I have no idea why. Now, for some reason, they shit out these ridiculous looking purple shit balls like some sort of diuretic rabbit who's eating a felt tip pen and the talent systems were changed again yes we agree soul harvest wasn't the most interesting thing in the world but flat out just making it a damage increase and it's got all these time restrictions on it as does the reaper of souls i just do not understand how they could have turned this into anything more boring playing it is just painful it's really painful uh we had ghost in the office today while i was actually filming affliction he was looking at it he's going is that right i'm like yeah that is right unfortunately this is just how it plays i tried mixing up the talents endlessly i played a very well specced out 110 character for a quite a while uh but affliction mm, sorry blizz this is just a colossal fuck up even the really satisfying pop of sow the seeds and we could talk about this here the satisfying pop of sow the seeds is quite cool but you then can pair it over to the fire mage with its new living bomb fire mage is just madly more satisfying and it has a very similar mechanic and i just don't get it they managed to keep things like mana tap uh, 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 while switching up all the other talents and making them just so much less interesting sad times indeed now that is actually the end of the shitters only the two only beastmaster and affliction actually caught me as being absolutely terrible the vast majority actually fall into these specs are fine these specs are absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with them whatsoever did they blow my dick off no but i had a lot of fun on them regardless first up is arcane at first when i saw that a lot of the mana stuff was less severe let's say that in legion i was kind of thinking ah, maybe this isn't going to be as cool as i would have hoped it to be uh but they've maintained so much fun in this and it's all so satisfying popping alieneth and even seeing alieneth the artifact weapon actually shouting at you when your mana gets low i need mana mana i need it it's really cool it's so cool it's such a light show and i just want to say that all the specs that are in this category in this middle section are all pretty similar uh, although they're in an order they have to be in an order in order to get through them but it's still all pretty much the same so yeah arcane orb is very cool erosion and quickening gets really fun there isn't much to dislike here the only things i didn't like really the tier 15 rk familiar is boring presence of mind isn't that interesting neither is words of power but root of power the new version as much as i rag on it and most people do as well because it's a very silly mechanic in a lot of situations it's okay it's fine. It's actually much better in this scenario where you can use it when you think it's going to be more important for little burst phases and stuff. Big fun to be had with the arcane. Next up then, as moved up in my books, because it probably would have been one of the shitters originally, is the Balanced Druid. Yeah, the Balanced Druid. I I'm so glad I came back and spent some time with it. I must have spent four, four hours with it in uh, recent days. So glad I did that. Uh, the shift to make the moon spells faster, I think we could all agree, for those who have been playing Balance for a while, is they are proud. And I spoke about this on a few occasions with different specs, is the pride that Blizzard has in certain ideas. And they are obviously proud of the idea that they had with the moon spells. The new moon, the half moon, and then, of course, the colossal full moon. I would say that the playstyle is much more fun. I'm still not a fan of the new Starfall, which was a controversial thing I, uh, that I released earlier on. The new Starfall doesn't feel anywhere near as fun as the old Starfall starfall in my opinion but but the only big problem i have with balance and it's a problem that is shared amongst my little skype community of druids is one where will the scaling go there's a lot of things here all the talents point towards astral power gain and at a certain point that's not going to be too beneficial especially as firing off solar wrath and lunar strike even when empowered, ain't that satisfying. So, so much of the spec is tied into Star Surge and the new moon spells, while all these other spells just feel kind of left by the wayside to make room to make sure that you love the new moon spells. You care about the new moon spells. You want to be lining up that full moon for the exact right moment because, good God, when it comes crashing down, it is so fucking cool. It is really so cool. The Balustrade was vastly improved by just speeding up the spec, making it so the spells felt a little bit different. Big problem I had 
had when I first played it is that all the spells had basically the same cast time. They were doing similar damage. It just was not that interesting whatsoever. So other than the fact that Solar Wrath and Lunar Strikes feel weak sauce regardless of how powerful you're supposed to be making them, and the big big focus being on the moon spells the moon spells regenerate quickly enough and cast quickly enough that that's not a big deal to me i really enjoyed this next up then is destruction for the warlocks destruction destruction plays basically the same as it does in what right they did listen to our feedback which was on dimensional rift they added a cast time to it the initial version in uh, the very 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 super early legion alpha had no cast time meaning that you could line it up with either eradication windows or you could use it for mobility and it, they added a cast time to it which took away pretty much all the mobility besides being able to conflag on the move they changed it back and thank god they did because now it's so much fun i love the long-term havoc effect i love playing around with it the destruction warlock for a lot of people is seen as kind of a newbie thing i really don't mind it i don't mind it at all i do wish we had embers back i still wish we had all those effects yes they lost those and i was kind of sad about it but ultimately this spec works out kind of well the only actual drawback i had with this and i'm showing a little bit in the background now is aoe if you don't spec into it fully is a real drag it's a real drag. You just kind of run out of things to do while you're just trying to get your three soul shards to drop your rate of fire. Although I'm so happy that rate of fire works as it does. It's really satisfying. It feels meatier while it's carrying that soul shard cost. The damage is absolutely fantastic in my eyes. We had a big controversy. It's like, well, my curse spot isn't like one trophy. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to look nice, look fancy, and feel satisfying to use. And it absolutely does. So I am more than happy with where they've gone with destruction. Slight alterations. Gameplay basically unchanged. That's fine. They don't have to change the gameplay of anything. If the gameplay is good, good. Let's do something with it that maybe fits the mold a little bit better. And that's what they've done with destruction. And I love it so much. Next on the list, Frost Mage. I did a video on this because I felt it was a crime that it was being ignored and dropped and people were going no i'm, not, I'm never going to play frost it's damage is shit because frost is super fucking cool it's really cool it's so cool it's so interesting to play and i've done a whole video on it recently of the very most up-to-date version of it and i've got to say i really enjoyed it leveling as it was great arcane was easily the worst leveling spec that i picked up but frost ton of fun all the time didn't like a couple of things like Flurry, which make it not spectacular. A lot of the animations are really good, but there's a little bit of hypocrit hypocritical uh, design there that doesn't really pay off when you're mixing them all together. But I've got to say, I thought Frost was a ton of fun. An absolute ton of fun. I don't think they needed to go down the route of trying to get rid of the pet. They should have stuck with the pet for Frost and made that work out. I think that was absolutely fine. But other than that, I have absolutely no complaints about it. I've just done a video on it that is very up to date, so go and check out my thoughts there. Next on the list in the middle of the road, doing pretty well, maybe controversial to some, was the Demonology Warlock. The Demonology Warlock has had a little rough time of late with people like trying to, you know, calculate that like, we shouldn't be casting Fellstalkers or whatever. But obviously, most of us understand that that's not intentional. The actual playstyle of Demonology, I really love. I love the fact that the entire focus is pretty much on demons. Your outside spells that aren't generating demons or buffing your demons are simply filler in order to generate more shards, to generate more demons. Once you start getting into really obscene haste levels and stuff like that, your demon army starts to become really really crazy and then mass missed on top of that is the aoe which is a really difficult thing to pull off as you're trying to achieve this sense of really dark void magic not really that cool you know what i mean it's not it, there's sometimes i can go all the way to be fully cartoony i kind of reminded of thor the second thor movie in the marvel universe where i can't remember what it was called it was the red stuff that's an infinity gem and it looked kind of silly. It didn't look evil at all. It didn't look evil in my eyes. And they could have easily gone down that route. But I think it looks so good when all your demons start emanating and pulsing and convulsing with this dark shadow energy. I really enjoy it. So mixed feedback from other people saying that they don't particularly enjoy it. They think the playstyle is a little bit stale. It's predictable for sure. It's absolutely predictable. I'm kind of okay with predictable as long as it also works well graphically and pays off in terms of feeling satisfying. And getting all the demons out to me is a very satisfying experience. I love the idea that they could have even gone even further and stripped away any idea of actually casting a lot of demon spells. I would say that the soul shadow overlap you get with the dooms is a little bit frustrating sometimes, but that is so minor because they're all doing their job and you're maxing out your shards. And it's obviously something they can play on in the future. Probably unexpectedly then, next up is the Marksman Hunter. 
Marksman Hunter was is easily the best Hunter spec, which was obviously clear now as we've covered both Survival and Beastmaster. Uh, Marksman is not only terrible, it's really cool when you get it going, especially if you can choose the right tooltip. Firing off the headshots, which is changed now to piercing shot, and also firing off the ricocheted aim shots, mixing up those talent systems, which is something I truly, truly adore, is whenever Blizzard makes a talent system that is fresh, innovative, changes things up, reprioritizes spells that drop out. If you spec a certain way, you'll actually bring in spells that you've been ignoring for a little while, and then moving them back in and making them more interesting again. Love that, and Marksman contains all of that. It feels really cool, and you feel like you're ping-pinging, and I did do the video on it where I was going, pew-pew, it hasn't changed too much since then but mixing up the sidewinders and also all that kind of stuff and the quick shots and the careful aims all that stuff works really well in my eyes for marksman i think marksman is a pretty good spec and if i was a hunter i'd be hoping and praying that marksman was the go-to spec to be playing because if it wasn't ugh, it even includes some real focus management which bm is vastly desperate for because uh, taking your hands off the keyboard to wait a couple of seconds is not focus management by any means Last in the sort of middle of the road specs then, the Fire Mage. A lot of people thought I hated the Fire Mage. That's not the case. That's not the case. And mo at least a good percentage of people actually picked up that I didn't hate the Fire Mage. The only biggest issue I have with the Fire Mage is combustion is way less interesting now. That's it. Everything else is better. Everything else is better. I am all for consistency. And consistency was certainly something you could achieve for the most part later in gear levels in both expansions. However, I was sad that combustion was made into something a little ordinary. Because combustion has been such a f flare of, of fun for so long. Getting that good combustion was a hugely satisfying experience. However, the addition, in particular, I've got to give big love here, is to the new living bomb. Really fucking fun. That pop, I was comparing it to sow the seeds earlier, is so satisfying. You get to do the timing of it so perfectly with ad spawn and all that kind of stuff, which is what you want in gameplay. When do I use this global cooldown? So the second they spawn, they're instantly all living bombed, and they all detonate at exactly the same time. It's automatically spreading properly, which means you maintain focus on one target instead of dropping away, clicking a target, dotting it, clicking a target, dotting it, like we saw in Wrath of the Lich King, and then further versions down the line. The consistency of Inferno Blast or Fire Blast has gone back to all that stuff works so well. Phoenix Flames... <clears throat> Phoenix Flames works well for that little burst phase that you're going to pull off, right? Phoenix Flames is wonderful when you're doing AoE because it naturally spreads. All that stuff is really cool. When you finally get your artifact power to make Flame Strike worth a piss, that works as well. Everything about the Fire Mage is really great. It's absolutely great. Except... Except for combustion. Combustion is my only reason that fire doesn't drop into like the creme de la creme of range DPS specs. But that is a pretty minor complaint for the consistency. And obviously, people playing the pre-patch or playing on the on Legion right now are really seeing the benefits of all the all the little mechanics that have tied together in fire. And it's definitely something that I can recommend to anyone who's going to enjoy. In fact, the entire mage spec is something I can recommend. So, you probably worked out that there's two remaining ranged DPS specs, and we are now moving into what I consider to be the really, really well done specs. Two of them. First up, then, is the Elemental Shaman. This is the best version of the Elemental Shaman I have ever seen, and it is so good. It maintains the full basics of what makes an elemental shaman. The really satisfying spells, the big meaty shocks, the spreading of flame shock, the chain lightning is still cool. Earthquake is so good now that you can bank them properly. Consider when you're going to drop them, chain drop them, and put them all back to back. All that kind of stuff is so good. So, so good. And I've loved every time I've come back to play Elemental. And not only that, what makes it absolutely take it to that next level is the huge variety in the talents, which keep this spec fresh every time I play it. If I'm a little tired of testing and I'm doing some sort of leveling or I'm doing some dungeons or practicing or doing whatever, I'm thinking, you know what? I want to try something different, but I still want to play Elemental. All I do is swap a couple of talents. I'm basically playing a different spec, but it's still got those basic fundamental key things but it switched it back over it's changed it, it just kept it that little bit more interesting i have to think about things in a different way the foundation is great and the talent system is great the artifact weapon is great the only negative i have here and some people will go really preacher but i have to bring up the negative was the change of storm caller which is the artifact ability that buffs your lightning spells the storm caller being changed to an instant cast you might recall when i did the elemental preview 
I lauded that Stormcaller was a fantastic animation, raising that rat fist of Raden into the sky and really felt like you were interacting with the elements of air to empower it. And it felt meaty. It gave weight to it. It felt strong. And they change it to an instant cast, which means he kind of just pokes his fucking fist in the air and now he's buffed. It just takes away everything I just spoke about, that meaty, brutal aspect that you've just powered this fucking thing up and you're going to start hammering into the enemy. Um, did it? I think that was the only change, literally the only change that I was like, eh, you could have rebalanced in a different way. I would absolutely love to have seen that animation maintained because it is so cool. Uh, the only people who have that animation still in its proper form, I believe is the Dis Priest when they're cast lights wrath i could be wrong if there's somebody else but holding that weapon into the sky and sucking in those air elementals to be buff i mean it does it for like two seconds now whereas previously he held it up and he was like sucking all the lightning into it and you're like oh shit and then of course it's one of the only specs to make it even better that actually includes decent stuff as you get down into the uh, the artifact weapon, which is so cool. You get to work with it. You get to work with the Volcanic Inferno, the power of the Maelstrom, which causes your next three lightning bolts to trigger elements of overload. This is all fucking cool. All fucking cool to line these up. And this is one of the only specs that actually has something like that down in the artifact tree that is worth considering and improves the gameplay as you move further down. There's barely no talent choices in the Elemental Shaman, which I think, ah, you know what? That sucks. Not really. Even fucking bringing Frost Shock into the mix. I mean, Jesus Christ. So fucking cool. And a uh, winner, I guess. Although I consider Elemental and this one to be equally on par with each other. But one must become before the other. Is, of course... <laughs> the Shadow Priest. The Shadow Priest. I've been raving about the Shadow Priest ever since I first got to try it, and it was uh, annoying to me that I couldn't just, like, play it all the time <laughs> and just, just play a Shadow Priest. But obviously, as uh, you guys are well aware, I have to go do the other things. The Shadow Priest has undergone some changes. Some changes which were, at first, I was like, nah, I don't really like that. But on further reflection, I see exactly why Blizzard's done it. And it does lend a little bit of credence and does make a lot of sense. Switching up Void Farm so it wasn't just a pop in and pop out uh, was, first of all, very annoying to me. But then I got to play it a little bit more. You see the mechanics where it's actually interacting now with Shadow of Pains. That's something you really want to consider when you're popping into your Void Farm is cool. Making it so it's a little bit slower now, a little bit more difficult means that the ramp up time and the eventual scaling of the Shadow Priest makes more sense now because obviously I hit the 100 club as did many, 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 many others in basically starter gear, uh, which is not intended. You're supposed to be like working up today if you're going to be using something like uh, Serenity to Madness. I will mention here, I am a huge, 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 huge fan of Serenity to Madness. I was utterly dismayed to see people posting feedback on the forums that they were trying to use it for things like leveling, you fucking idiots, and complaining that this was used or in fact simply not reading the tooltip and not understanding exactly how it's worked while also declaring that the spell should be removed without obviously never testing it in their entire lives. I will say though, you've got to bear this in mind to a lot of people who have heard me and I've shown Serenity to Madness on stream a couple of times, especially during the web show while I was showing it to Ghosty, is that that's not the be-all and end-all of the spec. It's actually super, super niche. I wouldn't expect to be using Serenity to Madness that much at all. But when you do get to use it, it's very fucking wonderful. But without that, everything else is really fucking cool. I really like the Void Eruption now. I really like that that automatically transfers into Void Bolt so we don't have this unnecessary extra key binding that remains dead because we already have one of those in terms of our Void Torrent. I love the different scaling options. The scaling is something I'm a big fan of, especially if I'm recommending these to be main spec for you how auspicious spirits will come into play later over shadowy insight and working all the way through this to tailor it depending on what your haste levels are what's your crit levels what's your mastery all these different things are going to play into the different variety of talent options and gameplay options similar to the elemental shaman that you have on offer to really maximize that void farm potential and what you'll just see constantly as your gear gets better as things improve for you over the course of the expansion is the shadow priest i know i guarantee it is just going to get more and more fun the further you go down the line what it will look like at the end of the expansion i don't know it could be fucking incredible it could be really crazy or they might hammer it into the ground at some point potentially it has the, this one has the absolute potential which isn't going to be automatically limited like the balance druid i think is is limited in scale because the all oh, you might generate a lot of extra astral power but i don't think it'll pay off as much as it will do for a shadow priest is 
whether or not it'll become absurd. This has the potential to become really absurd, especially on super quick boss kills. I could already see. If you imagine this was Wall of the Drain, or right now you would have definitely Shadow Priests and probably not Arcane Mages or whatever doing those super fast boss kills because you'd have them all popping Surrender to Madness and going absolutely balls to the wall fucking crazy. Uh, how this will be used, I, I know I don't want to go on about it too much, but how this will be fucking utilized by top guilds and raiding guilds to overcome certain obstacles is something I'm super interested to see. But on top of that, besides the fact the only one I didn't like, the, literally the only talent that I didn't think fit in here was Mind Spike. I've tried Mind Spike on multiple occasions and just do not enjoy it. And I'm really hoping it doesn't pay off. But the different choices of how you want to generate your insanity, how you want to manage your insanity while you're in Void Farm, all that stuff works so well to make this class awesomely fun. Awesomely fun. And the fact that Mind Seer, as boring as Mind Seer is, which is incredibly boring, this one hit, one one play maneuver works with the insanity mechanic makes it that much more interesting I and mean, it's it's not easy to make mind seer interesting because it's fundamentally not interesting in any means ladies and gentlemen those is your range dps comparison in my opinion obviously and once again i remind you these recommendations are based on the idea that you will be playing these specs over the course of an expansion based entirely on the information we have now it is very very difficult to put these videos together because they require such an enormous amount of play time a huge amount of playtime in order to get this information and research accurate and i hope it benefits you in some way i look forward to reading the comments and i hope that it isn't just full of well fuck you preacher because i liked bm good for you i don't mind man i don't mind i'm glad you enjoyed it ladies and gentlemen goodbye and i'll see you again in the healer comparison which is coming up shortly bye bye